Great. Royster, I'm a system engineer here at Clearwater. Been here a little over a year, and today I'm going to be talking about continuous integration using Jenkins pipelines. So what are Jenkins pipelines? Um, quick one though, in case you don't know, Jenkins is a continuous delivery tool like uh, Elastian's Bamboo, Travis CI, Circle CI, Drone, any of those that you use to build, test, and deploy your products. So pipelines on Jenkins are about a set of about 75 plugins and counting. They just keep adding new ones for new features. Uh, people are taking their plugins that used to work for previous job types and adding support for pipelines. You have two types. You have scripted and declarative pipelines. Uh, scripted pipelines is how they first began. It really only wow. described the, the build step of your pipeline, really. How, what, what commands did you want to run when you were building and testing your code, but didn't describe the whole job, which is what declarative gives us. With the declarative pipeline, we can describe where we want to build our job, how, what agents we want to run it on, do we want to run testing in, in parallel, um, do we want to change agents midway through a job, we can do all of that with declarative. It lives as a Jenkins file in your repo, sort of how if you were building Docker images, you'll have a Docker file at the base of your repo. With this, you'll have a Jenkins file, it's just a plain text file that describes how you want your pipeline to work. Uh, follows that DevOps philosophy of configuration as code. Rather than going onto Jenkins, configuring through a web interface, how you want to design and configure your job for your CI, uh, we get to put it with the project. And that lets us uh, have a better history for it, lives with our code in case we need to move to a new Jenkins instance, we bring our job with us rather than having to remember how we configured everything. Uh, and pipelines, uh, in, in the file, it's a Groovy DSL, it's a domain specific language. So you can run straight Groovy in a pipeline in a scripted block, but a lot of it is predetermined uh, formatting uh, in the DSL that the, the pipelines plugins have all set up or extend. Uh, in case you don't know Groovy, Groovy is a dyna blah, dynamically typed programming language uh, running on the JVM. Since it's going to be, in this case, running in the same JVM that Jenkins is running on, you have access to the Jenkins instance and anything that Jenkins itself has access to. If you need to uh, pull credentials down so that you can remote into another host, you can store those credentials in Jenkins and securely pull them down in the pipeline just by an ID as opposed to, in your code, putting those credentials in there. Uh, Groovy ignores the private and protected that you're going to get in your normal JVM code. So while you write all your Java code for or Jenkins itself has private and protected methods, Groovy running on it ignores all of those. You'll get automatic getters and setters. And the pipeline will run in a sandbox with its Groovy, meaning, hey, I don't want just anybody accessing all of the credentials we have available and just printing them out, and that way they get all our usernames and passwords that we've stored in there, or getting all the email addresses and every user that's registered on our Jenkins instance. A lot of those functions are protected in the sandbox. You can't call them. Uh, you can do prior script approval, and an admin can go in and say, hey, yeah, we do want people to be able to get this information. We can list it there. Or an admin can put in uh, libraries, and since an admin put them in, they're trusted, and anything that's in those libraries can be called. So why Jenkins pipelines? Again, really hammer in, it's configuration as code. It's where a lot of the whole DevOps philosophy is kind of headed. That's why we have things like Puppet and Chef and Ansible for designing our systems and managing our VMs. Uh, we're gonna do the same now with our CI pipeline. Uh, you'll be able to automatically build branches and pull requests. You'll be able to discover them. So instead of, hey, I have a Maven job on Jenkins, let me go in and custom tailor it and do all the settings I want and hey, now we built a new feature branch. I need to go to Jenkins and copy the template and hopefully nobody tweaked the template I'm copying and so we get this deviation across all of our, all of our products. Because it lives in code, code review it. Uh, you wanna go change a normal Jenkins job right now and you wanna code review it, kinda have to have somebody run over and look over your shoulder and scroll through the web form with you and make sure everything looks okay. Um, and when you make changes, unless you're running a plugin that tracks that history, you might not know something changed or not know what it used to be. Uh, this way we get that code review and that history. Uh, easy to do iterative development on that pipeline because you can make branches, make a new branch, test some changes. If they work, merge it in. Make a new branch, test the changes. The bank Jenkins will automatically pick up that branch, run it, run those new changes you want in your pipeline. If it looks good, you're set. 
and the library manager. Same reason we already write libraries for code, right? If I have a whole bunch of different projects, they're all pretty much running the exact same pipeline. Why am I writing the same pipeline everywhere else if it's the same issue we got when we were doing the, the regular Jenkins job? And we're duplicating so much and effort and you don't know if somebody's doing minor tweaks and not putting it back. So we can take a lot of our duplicated or complex code, move it into a library, and our pipeline can just call that instead. So you don't get to be a superhero without some weaknesses. Uh, difficult debugging is probably a, a very apparent one. You can't debug a Jenkins pipeline while it runs without basically debugging the entire Jenkins instance, and it can be a bit hefty to work through. Uh, there's a lot of concurrency and a lot of asynchronous stuff happening in that instance. Uh, lack of solid IDE support. You can export that Groovy DSL I was talking about earlier, and you will be able to uh, import it into something like IntelliJ, and it helps for a bit. A standard pipeline probably gets you 99% of the way there, but once you start writing more complex pipelines, you start writing libraries, the, you get out of the bounds of the DSL a little bit while still being valid pipeline code. And no static analysis. If you have an error in your code and you were calling a function, you thought you were just saying, yeah, I want to tell it what parameter I'm giving this uh, value to. You know, if you have, if you ever written pipeline or Python, um, Groovy isn't going to take that and it's going to think you're calling a function and passing in a map and it's going to keep blowing up and you don't get to know that until you commit your pipeline and try and run it. Um, so comparing them to traditional jobs, you've been hearing that a lot. So what do we get also? Uh, pipelines give you durability. So you have a large Jenkins instance. Uh, let's say you have hundreds of executors on it or anything like that. You're going to be running all your builds, your testing, regression testing, you know, long-term tests that may take a week to execute, let's say. Uh, traditionally, if a Jenkins instance goes down, any builds running, they all fail. They all get aborted and they may not, they're not going to come back and know they need to start back up when the Jenkins instance comes back up. With pipelines, when the Jenkins master goes down, all the build agents will continue running your pipeline through to fru fruition all the way through or however far they get and maybe they'll have to stop and wait for human input so they'll pause. And when the master comes up, the build agents reconnect, they'll update the master with all of the output. Here's all the console output, here's all the status we got all the way through and so you don't lose any of that information and you don't waste any time while your master goes down. Uh, you can pause and wait for human input, which you can't do in the middle of a traditional job. You can get some parameters at the start, but with a pipeline, you can wait. Let's say, hey, I want to build test, go to development automatically, kick off some regression testing. That looks great. Let's go to staging, run some larger test suites, and we're going to wait and make sure somebody's going to okay this one. This is the one we might want to send to production. So we can pause. Let's say we want to wait 24 hours or a week or anything we want on that build, and we can wait, and an authorized person can come in through your CI, click, yes, this is the build we want to deploy to production, and it will run your production deploy step. And that way you have that tied to, through that entire build, all the information that happened to it. You get a lot much more versatility in build execution. Uh, rather than describing one agent that this can run on and every step runs on one agent and if you need to change build agents partway through you need to kick off a different Jenkins job you can have it start and say hey this is a lightweight this is just some human input that doesn't need an actual build agent this we're gonna run on a Linux box now we're gonna kick off some selenium testing we want to check it on Windows Mac and uh, Linux and we want to check all these different browsers you can run those as different build agents um, and since it's already a whole bunch of plugins, you can keep extending it with more plugins, right? You, you had a Jira plugin to update your Jira comments, now they can update the Jira plugin, and now you can comment through pipelines on your Jira tickets as well. So we're gonna go look at an initial Maven job here for a project, and we're gonna have some questions, right? We talked about earlier, duplicating your configuration if you get another branch, building pull requests, is that possible, or implementing workflow changes um, when we have lots of jobs. So I don't know if you've ever seen a configuration for a normal Jenkins job, but it's, like I noted, it's a web form. You scroll through it, you click lots of things, and here we're gonna discard some builds. We're only gonna keep 20 builds and tell it where my repo is. Here we're only gonna run the master branch. You could tell it to run any branch, but it doesn't keep them as separate jobs. It could be build one was on master, build two's on feature branch A, build three's on master again, and four's on feature branch B and they don't display that easily in the UI. You'll have to go into the console really to tell that information. And it's just gonna run a simple 
Maven, clean deploy, and run some OWASP testing for us. So, like I said, can't really build pull requests that way. And hey, let's say I wanted to update my JIRA tickets. That might be in my comments. If I had a couple thousand jobs like that, and I needed to add the JIRA feature, I have to go edit a couple thousand jobs. You can script it with you know, grep and sed and find, or you can try and write a groovy script for it, but it's either way, it's not a pretty thing to do. So instead, let's make a pipeline job. And when you prepare a pipeline job, there's two real types. Nowadays, if you're doing declarative, you have a multi-branch or an organization. An organization is really just a series of multi-branch jobs, one for each project in your organization. Um, in this case, we just have a normal multi-branch. And tell it our repo, give it our credentials. It's up on GitHub. And most of these are just automatic. Oops. Not like this touchpad. Um, we'll discover branches, we'll discover pull requests, and even pull requests from Fork in this case, since it's a GitHub project. Uh, you can do additional things if you want. You can have advanced cloning behaviors. Uh, you can check out over SSH, SSH or and clean before checkout, like I am in this case. And after that, you really just tell it, hey, I have a Jenkins file. And there's not much else in terms of build configuration that you can do like you could in the other ones. You can set a Jira pipeline if you wanted. Or uh, not Jira pipeline, sorry, a pipeline library. And so it scanned my GitHub repo. It found that I had seven branches that had Jenkins files in them. And so it made a job for every single one of them and has executed them all. So we're going to walk through some of these. So start simple. Right, that's what I said. Let's just have a normal pipeline, and we're going to run on any agent, and we're just going to one step. It's our Maven step. It runs clean deploy. We want to make sure we at least get some syntax down correctly. Um, you have a nice replay feature with pipelines where you can replay in the UI and edit your pipeline if you want to test some minor changes or one little one-offs. Uh, doesn't work if the build never actually ran because you have syntax errors. So you kind of need some good builds started if you want to fiddle with some stuff. So in the pipeline, it's a lot easier to see in the UI. This is just, if you haven't seen this before for Jenkins, this is the Blue Ocean UI. This is basically their nicer pipeline view UI that they've been working on for a while. So we'll look at our Pipeline one here, first branch, easy, right? Start, Maven step, end step. It had uh, some general SEM, it's where it checked out all my repo. And here runs my Maven clean deploy. So we're going to keep working on that, right? So let's add back in some of those settings. Uh, we're just going to use a top level options block here. We're going to turn back on build discarder, uh, log rotator, and tell it how many we want to keep. We're going to disable concurrent builds. This isn't something that you have to do. I tend to like to, but if you use milestone steps, which uh, I think I just got no. Milestone steps are you can describe a step of your re of your pipeline that says if any project hits this, any older jobs that are still running, just skip it. Don't run anymore. Just cancel your job. This could be important. Like, hey, it's my deploy to production. I've got ten builds waiting to wonder if they should deploy. I deploy build number 10. I don't want to then accidentally deploy 1 through 9 and deploy older code over my new stuff. And then uh, turn on timestamps and pull SCM. And for Jenkins, you kind of always have to have pull SCM on even if it's not actually pulling because that's how they know to listen to post commit hooks. Um, so we can break apart our stages, right? That's one of the nice things about pipelines is doing lots of smaller steps. And so you can run them in parallel if you need to or break out the logic. So I'm not scrolling through one giant log trying to find one little part of it that ran. So we'll have a simple uh, clean test publish step here and tell Maven deploy not to run tests. Um, in here, in your stages, you'll, you'll always have at least, you'll have one stage always or a parallel one we'll show later. Uh, in there, you'll always have to have a steps block. And then this shell here is just one of many um, commands basically brought by plugins. They could be other Git ones. They could be you want to change a directory. They could be installing a tool. It could be, hey, deploy stuff to Artifactory. Um, here, we're going to use a plugin. 
there's a Maven pipeline plugin that helps you determine, helps you set what Maven and JDK you want to run your steps with. Uh, previously, if we had ran this, it's just gonna run whatever the system Maven is and whatever JDK the system has. You might have multiple JDKs on your system. You might have multiple Maven instances. Um, you might say, hey, my project needs to run with Maven 339 because we haven't validated it for 352 or anything like that. Uh, so here we can say with, with Maven, tell it what JDK and Maven instance we run, want to run. And these names are set by the admin of your Jenkins. They will go in into the admin tools and the configuration and they'll say, hey, we have one called Java 8, it's at this location. We have one called Maven 3, it's here. Uh, so the, the user, while you might be controlling the Jenkins file in your repo, you will have to get tool names from your admins or from your org. Uh, we'll turn on some OWASP testing. It's really just a Maven plugin, so we'll throw it in there in our test block. And uh, throw on some email notifications. Who doesn't love emails, right? So like we had the options and the stages top levels, we also have a post. Post will all, The post block will always run no matter what the status of a job was. And in there, here we're using unstable and failure, but things like success or aborted or changed are also all available. And this is a prime example of, it's a lot of duplicated text. And we also might want to put changed here because an email would be nice if I know my build went back to stable. Uh, so this would be a great example of putting something into a library so that in my post block, I just say, you know, call my standard emails function and it knows exactly what I want to consider. Um, and we mentioned, I mentioned earlier, you can parallelize your testing. So in our test stage, we can throw in a parallel block instead and in there describe additional stages. Here we're really just breaking out our unit testing and our OWASP testing. So here you can see, right, we had our clean we broke out earlier, run simple Maven clean. We have parallel testing occurring between our unit testing and our OWASP testing. And then finally we run our publish step. Now the parallel step, you have more control over it. I didn't change the default options, um, but you can say, hey, always run all of parallel no matter what, um, but the default is a fast failure. So if I have lots of testing occurring in parallel, and part of it might take an hour because it's regression testing, uh, if my unit tests fail, I don't want this build anyways, so it'll cancel all my regression testing that was kicking off. I'm gonna run over some useful stuff here. So up on the Jenkins website, they have documentation on all of the syntax here, and the sections you can use, agent post stages we covered, and different directives. You can uh, describe different triggers for your build, like pull SCM, you can describe tools at the top level. So we did a smaller with Maven block. We could describe at the top level, this is the Maven and JDK instance I want to use throughout the entire tool. Um, but with Maven lets you adjust it partway through if you need to. You can also set environment variables or um, in a case for some of our stuff, we use a when where I can say, hey, I don't want to ever deploy anything to production that's not from my master branch. So. Anytime I get to my deploy stuff, I'll put a when and say my branch is master. And if I ever get to a when step where I don't meet the qualifications, it just skips it. Now, it won't stop the build or fail the build, it'll just skip the one step. So if that's something you want to continue throughout your project, you'll need to continuously put in the when that, that you need for skipping. Uh, Fabricate is a continuous development platform is what they call it, but they have some great pipeline libraries out here for examples. Um, pipeline libraries, when you set them up, you're gonna have a, you can have your normal library here in your source, standard like Java naming, and you'll also have a vars, which is where you put, Jenkins calls them global variables. They're really the easiest way to remember is that's where your steps go if you wanna write steps. So anything in this repo is basically gonna be a library that you have to instantiate and call functions in. Uh, and it's just normal groovy. But anything in VARs, this is where we can get custom steps. So in this case, let's say, hey, I want to do logic for tagging what's running right now in Git. Uh, rather than me always remembering all the commands I have to run and where to get my credentials, we can just make a Git tag step. And so if I was calling this in a pipeline, it would have been like when I was calling shell. I would have typed just Git tag space and then any 
uh, variables that I need to pass in. In this case, they're taking a map and processing the map. And then it'll run through like that normal step. It'll run a whole bunch of shell commands and then get and push for you. Um, and when I was talking about sharing that standard pipeline, this is a great example. Here you have a large pipeline. Describe your agents, a whole bunch of stuff about your environment for what branches you're going to run, that where your servers are located. Uh, typical, right? Build, test, deploy. Well, we can, here in this case, they're deployed. That's a custom step. That's a VARS deploy script we have right here, which does a post to a URL, remotes into it, and checks that it deployed. Um, but we can take that entire pipeline, basically any stage of a pipeline, any level, pipeline level, stages, posts, steps, anything like that, you can move into a one of the VARS Groovy scripts and call it as long as you're calling it in the right stage. It almost just inlines the text. So here, they moved that entire pipeline from above into a Groovy library. And now when they call it their Jenkins file, I'm not liking the scroll. They have one line. It calls my delivery pipeline, passes it some variables. And now when the organization changes the pipeline, they say, we want to add Jira comments to every single build, no matter what it was, all the projects. We can go change it in our library, bump the global library version that everybody is using, and everybody automatically gets that new feature. Um, and just some other useful information. Tom just gave a talk on Docker. So if you saw that, this guy here, Sam Rocketman, has some useful repos for bootstrapping Jenkins. If you are ever in the mood to bring up your own Jenkins instance and check pipelines, he has ones here that just bring up the Slack plugin. But they are Docker files that will spin up a Vagrant image, spin up your Jenkins, and install basic plugins for you. So they're a great way to get started. And then other than that, I'm open for questions. Uh, are you talking at, uh, right now with IT to have a version manager set up uh, kind of the standard basic pipeline instead of one of the or as an option instead of uh, regular build jobs in the new project? Yeah. So the question was, am I working with IP so that we can migrate to pipelines from our current standard build jobs? Um, I have talked about it with them. I'm not actively in, in the works with them, but I am always open for help. Now Phil has comments. Man, everybody's got comments. Um, it is. It is something that I know IP is working on. I may not be the sole person. I'm not the sole person working on it, though, with them. We plan on starting work on that in December. Yeah. Uh, IP says they're working on it in December is when they're, they're planning their start work on it. Um, I do know, I believe, in other comments we had with them, I don't know the end target. Or no, the goal was to initially move builds into pipelines, and it could be also to move deploys into pipelines as well. So can I go back to my desk and turn it on for one of our projects yet, or no? Uh, can you go turn it on for your projects? You technically can. The problem is that all your other jobs are going to be running, and you will end up with weird build artifact issues likely in Artifactory since they're both going to be deploying to the same place. Um, you can, if you go get permission to run your own Vagrant box, own VMs, you can test with them locally. Um, I know some of the libraries I have that are out on, out on SVN have Jenkins files in them. They just don't deploy. So that way I'm not uploading artifacts, but they were a way for me to test with some of the stuff. Right, so Quincy says if you have a pipeline in your repo right now, uh, version manager doesn't understand how to determine builds from the pipeline jobs I made on Jenkins. Yeah, that's right. The API for the Jenkins jobs are different they, for pipelines than they are for Maven jobs in terms of what information you get out of them, how the rest endpoints work, and, and stuff like that. Hiding around here. Any more questions? I painted a really pretty picture. What are some of the, are there any downsides that you know of to using pipelines? No, they're just amazing. No. Uh, so what are the downsides to pipelines? Um, as I noted earlier, a lot of the downsides are development issues. They are not an easy thing to get started in. They are a trial and error. And once they get running and you get them up and running and doing what you want, I think they're great. Um, 
that's kind of where their whole industry of the CI industry is working. Whether it's Jenkins Pipelines, Travis does a YAML in your stuff, Bamboo does pipelines now. In fact, um, Bitbucket started supporting pipelines on their on their system on uh, Bitbucket.org. Um, so it's where the whole industry's heading. It's kind of like Docker, everybody's going there, but there's less of a holdback because we've had them for longer just in different forms. You sort of had pipelines with what was called a workflow job before. Um, it was much uglier. It didn't have that nice blue ocean UI, and it, it did the same thing, but through configuring a whole bunch of separate jobs. Um, other downsides to pipelines would be, while it's nice that you can have a Jenkins file in your repo, and it works for my instance here, and I could add the same repo to our Jenkins instance, and it'll pick it up, and it'll run it, and it'll build it. If you are depending on plugins in your pipeline that the other one doesn't have, it'll just fail with syntax errors. You can't say my pipeline requires these plugins to be installed um, before it runs. Um, or if you say, hey, I'm expecting this library, and before it was a globally installed library, and you add it as a new job, you might not have that library you were using before. Yes? You referenced a lot of Jenkins. Are there other um, popular software pipelines out there that's industry standard that they use a lot of? Yeah. Um, for Usually an on-site instance, Jenkins is probably the biggest one out there. You might also run to uh, Bamboo. It just depends on where you were when you decided to adopt one. Uh, Jenkins has been around for a long time. It came from Hudson, um, which is another Butler name, <laughs> I guess. Um, it has CloudBees backing it for their corporate version, right? We run, an op we run the normal open source one. You can get corporate hosted enterprise ones. Uh, out there, there's also uh, CircleCI and TravisCI. Both of those are web-based ones. Travis is great. If you have an open source project, you don't want to run a Jenkins instance, you can set up TravisCI and they will work off of GitHub repos if they're public. Um, we've also looked at things like Drone, uh, but they're just much smaller. Usually none of them have the community behind them that Jenkins has. Any final question? No? All right. Thank you.